Welcome back to the Good Book Club. We're here in chapter 15. We're still reading a part of what many call the last will and testament of Jesus. He's telling them what matters the most when He's gone. In a sense, He's giving them a tremendous gift. And while I don't want to spoil your day, I want to mention that we too have a chance to give our loved ones a great gift after we are gone in our last will and testament, so to speak. And what I'm talking about is simply planning your funeral, making a will, as hard as that may seem to do. It is a tremendous gift to the people that you leave behind. It's a chance uh, for you to let them know what matters the most to you. So I want to encourage you to, to talk to your clergy about that. And as we pick up in the middle of chapter 15, Jesus is discussing the consequences of living His way and truth and life into this world. He's saying there will be confrontation and conflict when you do this. So anyone who hears this idea of love as sappy and simple has not paid attention to the very life and way of Jesus. And He challenges us to consider how our faith in Him has made our lives uncomfortable or brought confrontation with the world or conflict. Note a significant shift as you read further into the beginning of chapter 17. Until now, Jesus has been teaching and preaching, but in chapter 17, Jesus stops preaching and He starts praying. He thanks God for His friends. He prays for them. And in a way, He consecrates them. He lifts them up just as He lifted up the bread and wine, and He asks God to set them apart to be holy. In other words, they are being set apart as God's very gift to and for the world. And I want to suggest that Jesus never stopped praying, that this is Jesus' prayer for your life and mine that we too are being consecrated, we too are given to the world and for the world. How does that affect your understanding of your own faith? After Jesus finishes praying, the story moves into the final hours of Jesus' life, and I'm always struck by how all four of the Gospels seem to converge and tell a very similar story about the final hours of Jesus' life. As much as they vary and differ, when it gets to the story of the cross, there is a, a convergence that is a reminder that, that here for the earliest Christians, this, this is the core of their story and it is the core of our story. Now, I'm going to tell you, I like to watch for what I call bookends in the Bible. Bishop Duval taught me this. And sometimes it's between books, and sometimes it's within books of the Bible. A great example of a bookend begins with the encounter between Moses and God. When Moses asks, so what is your name? And God says, I am who I am. And now in the Gospel of John, we have the other bookend, in a sense, in these recurring phrases when Jesus says, I am, I am the bread of life, I am the light of the world. Well, in chapter 18, we have another book in that I simply just want to point out to you. It's when Jesus asks the crowds, Who are you looking for? Do you remember back in chapter 1 at the seashore when the followers of John approach Jesus and he asks them, What are you looking for? Also, note that when they answer that they are looking for Jesus, he replies, I am He. And then we are told that their reaction is to fall to the ground. Don't you just kind of wonder about that? And how that might have been playing out for the earliest Christians and how they heard these words? The fact that you're in this Bible study suggests to me that you are someone who's been to church for at least a few Palm Sunday services. You've heard the stories of the cross. You've ha heard the passion drama more than once or twice. But what about now in your life? What's going on right now for you? How does your life now resonate with what you're reading this week? What character in this story do you most associate with? And what do you make of Jesus' final words? It is finished. What emotion do you hear? Why does John recall this line that is unmentioned in any of the other Gospels? What is it about his take on Jesus that he wants to make sure that we hear this? Let us pray. 
O God, Creator of heaven and earth, grant that as the crucified body of your dear Son was laid in the tomb and rested on this holy Sabbath, so we may await with Him in the coming of the third day and rise with Him to newness of life, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.